Now, what I really want to highlight here is the fact it talks about the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, salvation is do we receive the testimony of Jesus or do we reject the testimony of Jesus? Right. Now, you know, there's a lot of people when they preach the gospel, they want to focus on their personal testimony. Right. That is not how we preach the gospel. Yeah. Right. Because the gospel is not that, well, when I was 18 years old, I got saved. Or I started going to church when I was 19 years old. No, salvation, the gospel, is the testimony of Jesus that Amen. he was crucified, buried, and rose again. Amen. And you know what? There's a lot of people out there that would spend their time focusing on their personal testimony. Yeah. Now, the biggest culprits are these repentance of sins heretics. Yeah. Right. That's all they talk about is their testimony. Right. They talk about, boy, I was the worst sinner of them all. I used to drink. I used to party. I was a drug addict. And then I received Jesus, bless God. Yeah. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> now, yeah. now, now, here's my testimony. I didn't drink before I got saved. I didn't party. I was homeschooled. Now, now let, let's be honest. Who has a better testimony? Who has a cleaner testimony? Probably me because I wasn't a drunk. Why would you glory in your sin? That's garbage. Yeah. And praise the Lord if you quit drinking. But look, the sins I committed, I'm not going to stand up here and brag about what I did before I was saved or what I did several years ago. Yeah. I'm glad I got it out of my life. Why would you brag about it? Do you ever see God's people bragging about the sin they used to commit? Do you see Paul the Apostle talking about, boy, man, I used to kill people. You don't see that. He's not bragging in a personal testimony. And why would you brag about that? It doesn't make sense. The repentance of sins crowd is the worst culprits. But you know what? The truth is that I've heard independent fundamental Baptist preachers say the strongest thing you can have is your personal testimony. Because nobody can argue against your personal testimony. You know what happened in your life, but they can argue about the testimony of Jesus. It's like salvation is whether or not they believe the testimony of Jesus or not. Yeah. Right. Now, here's what's funny about it. Most people do not receive the testimony of Jesus. Could we agree on that? Yeah. We got 99% of this country that, you know, rejects it. 90% of this country is Catholic. 9% is all kinds of other weird religions. Most people reject the testimony of Jesus. You know what the truth is? There'd probably be a much higher percentage of people that would receive my testimony. Like if I told them about how God changed my life, they'd be like, wow, that's amazing. That doesn't get them saved, though. Yeah, I right. I mean, who cares if I give them my testimony and they say, wow, that's great. Now, look, if we want to bring people to church, talk to people that you know that are saved and tell them how great this church is and how it is changing your life. But if you're going to preach the gospel to someone, you don't talk about your testimony. Yeah. You talk about the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, turn to Psalms 19. Yeah. Psalms 19, verse 7. And when it comes to people that focus on their testimonies... By and large, they're usually not saved. Yeah. You know, I've been to, when I was a, a freshman in college is when I got saved. So the next couple of years, I was in all these, like, Christian groups on the college campus, you know. And they, they have, like, every denomination under the sun. Because they want to accept everybody. So you got Methodists, Lutherans, Catholics, Baptists, Pentecostals. you got people from all backgrounds in these places. And they would have testimony time. And people would get up here and give their testimony. And they talk about, boy, I grew up in church, and you know, when I was a teenager, I started to drink, I strayed away from God, and I came to college, I decided to rededicate my life to God. And everyone starts clapping. <laughs> and I'm looking around, like, am I missing something? Where's the part about you believed on Jesus? And the truth is, the vast majority of those people are unsaved. That's why they receive that testimony, but they reject the testimony of Jesus Christ. Our salvation is dependent on what you think about the testimony of Jesus. Do you believe or do you reject it? Psalms 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. Now, this verse is the whole basis for the way of the bastard series. The way of the master. And that is not cussing. That word is in the Bible. Right. The way of the bastard series by Ray Comfort. Who here knows Ray Comfort? The way of the master series. He's the biggest repentance of sins heretic in the world right yeah. now. He has such a huge reach where he's preaching the gospel to people and his whole thing is getting people to turn from their sins. This is his big verse for his ministry. What he says is this. He says when it says the law of the Lord is perfect, he says that's referring to the Ten Commandments. So when we preach the gospel, if you want to get people saved, if you want to convert the soul, you just talk about the Ten Commandments. Now here's why that's foolish. 
Look up the word law throughout the entire Bible. And guess what the law of... First off, there's more than ten commandments, buddy. Yeah. Right, right, right. There's a lot of commandments. Right, right, right. right. But the second thing is this. Look up the law in the Bible, and guess what it's referring to? It's referring to all the words of God. Yeah. Right. It's not just referring to commandments. Yes, there are certain laws in the Bible, but the whole Bible is referred to as the law of God. I mean, have you not cross-referenced that? Have you not looked that up, Ray Comfort? <laughs> and so it is saying the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Amen, because guess what? You can't get saved without the word of God. Amen. But it's not the Ten Commandments that is perfect, converting the soul. That's garbage. And yes, at the beginning of the conversation, we show people they're guilty. But look, you know, you don't have to browbeat someone and just talk about how in front of their wife, have you ever lusted after another woman? That's garbage. Yeah. Why are you doing that? Once someone understands they're guilty, you give them the good news. Yeah. Right. If all you're doing is just giving them the Ten Commandments, how is that good news? You give them the good news. And the second part of this verse says, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So once again, what we're seeing is to convert the soul, you use the Word of God, and the testimony of of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we preach the gospel, we, we use the word of God and we really focus on what Jesus Christ did. Now turn to 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. You say, well, that's just your opinion. I think I can convert people with my testimony. Well, I think most of us in this room would agree that outside of the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul the Apostle was maybe the greatest soul winner who ever lived. I mean, this is the guy who spoke so many languages. He could literally go on any missions trip. And it's like, oh, do they speak English? Hey, it doesn't matter. He speaks the language, right? He can go anywhere. I mean, he was a guy who knew languages, and he was just so dedicated, he wrote half the New Testament. What does Paul the Apostle say in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 and 2? And I, brethren... Now, now think about Paul the Apostle. This guy was a wise guy. This guy was a smart guy. If there was anybody that could convert people from his personal testimony, he used to kill people. He used to be a part of that in helping people destroy Christians and destroy the church. If anybody had a powerful testimony, wasn't it Paul the Apostle? Yeah. What does he say in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 and 2? And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus, or Paul the Apostle, he realized that, yes, I have a powerful testimony of how I became a Christian. A very unique story. But he doesn't tell people about how, hey, I was on the road to Damascus, and I saw this big light from heaven in this voice. He doesn't do that. He's not a Pentecostal, right? <laughs> That's Manny Pacquiao's conversion story. It's like, why don't you focus on the, the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ? And that's what Paul did. He didn't use wise words. He just told them. He said, I determined not to know anything. He made it a point to say, I am not going to try to talk like James White and these Calvinists that talk about how smart they are and talk on such a level that nobody understands the words they're saying. He says, I determined not to know anything among them, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. All he did was give the testimony of the Lord Jesus. So how do people get saved? It's the testimony of Jesus, not our own personal testimony or wise words. Turn back to John 3. 